Scripture reading today is taken from Psalm 100. Hear these words. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today we begin our Lenten series, The Journey, and over the next six weeks, we will be inviting you into spiritual practices that will make you grow in your walk with Jesus Christ and also strengthen you on your faith journey. Today we begin with worship, and we will look at how prayer is also an avenue into worship. Now the simple truth is that everybody worships something. We all look to something or to someone to give our lives meaning. We may not think about it as such, but whatever is foremost in our lives, whatever we give priority is what we worship. You see, worship really reveals what we value the most. It is what we look to in the mornings to get ourselves up and to take us throughout the day. Sometimes it's our possessions, Sometimes it's our wealth, sometimes it can even be sports. If you've ever been to a UGA Alabama game, you may know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes it can be nationalism or culture, and other times it can be mere humans. The story is told of Neil Martin, who was a member of the British Parliament, who was given a group of his constituents a tour of the Houses of Parliament. During the course of the visit, the group ran into Lord Hailsham, and Lord Hailsham was then the Lord Chancellor, and he was wearing all the regalia of his office. Nor, now, Lord Hailsham and Neil Martin were good friends, and so when Lord Hailsham saw Neil Martin across the room, he called out, Neil, trying to get his attention, and everybody who was present fell to their knees, thinking he was telling them to kneel. Too often, we mistakenly worship the wrong things. What would it be like if for us, we would come in a posture of kneeling before God in worship? What would it be like for us not have to wait on anyone to tell us to kneel, but to come knowing that God it is who has made us and so requires our humble hearts? Now, I also know when most Christians think about worship, they think about style. That is why when you ask persons about worship, they'll tell you, oh, we prefer traditional worship or we prefer contemporary worship. Some will even say we prefer blended worship. It is apparent from these answers that we have confused worship with styles, liturgical styles, music styles. We have mistaken these styles for worship and not identifying worship for what it really is, the reverent adoration and praise of God. Worship is never about a particular liturgical style or a type of music. It is not about whether an organ or a music band is played in the service. To worship God is to acknowledge God's power and sovereignty. It is to know that God is the one who has made us and to acknowledge all that God has done. As one person puts it, worship is our response to the initiating acts of God's love, compassion, grace, and mercy. This is what the psalmist is inviting us to do today. The psalmist tells us, come into the Lord's presence joyfully and gladly. Come with singing because God is the one who has made us. We belong to God. We are God's people. 
The psalmist continues and say, God is good and God's love and faithfulness endures forever. We are to purpose our hearts and our minds and our bodies to enter into God's presence in humble adoration. This is what Jesus, this is what God had intended for us to do even from the beginning of creation. That's why in his conversation with the woman at the well, Jesus said that God is actively seeking those who will worship God in spirit and in truth. Do you hear that, church? God is actively seeking those who will worship God in spirit and in truth. If you think about it in this way, the one who has made us, the one who has formed us and created us, the one who has made the universe, the God who is sovereign is actively seeking you and me and all of us to worship in spirit and in truth. The sovereign God is actively seeking mere mortals to worship God in spirit and truth. Isn't that profound? That God is looking for us, seeking us out to say, come into my presence and let us commune together. That is what God is doing. Several years ago, I went home and I visited my home church. As I sat there that Sunday, I sensed that there was something extraordinary happening in the service. So I sat with my head bowed and I was in prayer while the worship team was singing. At some point, I felt a high static presence around me. It was almost as if I was caught up in a high voltage of electricity and I just sat there. Immediately, I heard a friend of mine beside me speaking in tongues and praising God and I became aware that the presence of God was right there beside us. My entire being surged with the presence and the awareness of God. I was literally afraid to move. If I had pushed my hand to the right, I felt I was bumping against something even though there was no one physically there. It was so obvious that God was right there. It's the most awesome experience you could ever have. And I say, I think I have an understanding of what Isaiah experienced when he walked into the temple and saw God seated high and lifted and the train of God's robe filled the temple. It said, Isaiah fell on his knees and said, woe is me for I am undone. I live among people who have unclean lips and my eyes have seen the glory of God. I had that experience that day and it will never leave me. It was so real. God was in our midst. It made me realize that when we worship God, God shows up. Now the truth is God is always present. God is omnipresent. Wherever we go, we can never escape the presence of God. But there is something about worship there is something about getting into that experience with God when we worship God that makes our senses, that makes our mind more aware of the presence of God. And it ignites something in us so powerful that we will be fully aware that God is right there. To worship God is to reverently adore and praise God. And it's something that each of us needs to practice every day. Now, there is more than one avenue into worship, but I believe prayer is the primary one. You see, prayer launches us into the presence of God. It's the vehicle that moves us through the thin veil between the spiritual realm and the physical realm, and it connects us with God. Through prayer, we are ushered into continuous communion with God. And this is not just about words. Words is just one of the forms of prayer that we can use. It could also be just about listening, sitting there saying, God, here am I. It could also be just about silence, pausing our minds, which are always going to sit in the presence of the Most High God to allow ourselves to be open 
to God's presence to be at work in us and through us. Prayer is the business of the believer. I know sometimes our lives are so crammed and we feel so pulled in multiple directions that we think we don't have time to pray. But prayer is the business of the believer. It was Martin, Martin Luther, the reformer, who said he is so busy that he has to spend at least three hours every day in prayer to get on with the busyness of his life. Jesus, who was always doing ministry, would take time apart to go and pray. Prayer is the business of the believer. Now, I know we in the Western society, we are what I would call a fix-it-ourselves kind of people. We have been so trained and programmed to do it ourselves, that we take that attitude in everything that we do and we are almost hesitant, if not very reluctant, to turn things over or to have someone else take over from us. We are fixers, that's what we are. But the truth is there are some things that we cannot fix on our own. There are some things that we will experience in life and will go through in life that we cannot fix, no matter how good we are with our hands, no matter how good we are with our minds. There are some things that life will throw at us that we can never fix on our own. And that's where God comes in. And God is saying, I'm here, my child, turn it over to me. Now, it doesn't mean that we will not encounter hard times when we pray. It doesn't mean that we will not struggle. It doesn't mean that things won't come, of a, come at us that blindsides us. But it simply means that whatever comes at us, because we have trusted God and we are trusting God, we can have that peace in prayer and through prayer to go through whatever it is that life throws at us. Prayer is the business of the believers. Ours is the lost when we neglect to pray. When we neglect to pray, ours is the loss. And you see, prayer is not just about asking for, for things, but it's about what happens to us and in us when we come into this holy intimacy, into this fellowship with God. We are changed on the inside. We are strengthened to go through the day. I think sometimes, even as Christians, we do not know the worth and the value of prayer. In his book, Why Christians Sin, J.K. Johnson tells the story about a small town that never had a pub. But one day, a local businessman decided to build a tavern in the town. And so a group of Christians from the local church were concerned and they planned an all-night prayer meeting asking God to intervene. It just so happened that a few days after they had prayed, lightning struck the building and burnt it to the ground. The owner of the tavern sued the church, claiming that the prayers of the congregation were responsible. Guess what the church did? They hired a lawyer to argue in court that they were not responsible for what happened. After the initial review of the case, the presiding judge commented, no matter how this case comes out, one thing is clear. The tavern owner believes in prayer and the Christians do not. <laughs> Ever so often, we underestimate the value of prayer. Prayer is an act of worship. It is going into God's presence and experiencing the fellowship, the communion, the holy intimacy with the Most High God. It is something we should do every day and throughout each day. It should be the first and the last thing we do every day along with different times throughout the day. Early converts to Christianity in Africa were so earnest and regular in their private devotions that each one would take a separate spot in a field where they would go and pour out their hearts to the Lord. Over time, the paths to these places became well-worn because they were walking through them each and every day to pray. As a result, it became obvious if one of the believers neglected to pray because it would, appear, it would be so apparent to the others. Grass would begin growing where they should have been walking. 
And so the others would remind the negligent one, brother, the grass grows on your path. I pray for us as a church that the grass will not grow on our path where prayer is concerned. Prayer is the lifeline of the believers. Prayer is what makes us go throughout the day. So one of the things I'm going to do this season is to challenge you into being a people who worship and a people who pray. Every day when we get up, the first thing we should do is to offer a prayer to the Lord. There's the old phrase that says a day hemmed in prayer is less likely to unravel. When we center ourselves, when we awake in the morning before rushing off into the day, we get to that place where we know that God is with us. The writer tells us he whose mind is stayed and Jesus is kept in perfect peace. I would also say as you get in your cars in the morning to go to work, pray. And if you get to work, give God thanks. You're driving with all the other crazy drivers in Atlanta. You have every reason to be thankful. <laughs> it could be a one minute drive from your home to work. I promise you the mere fact that you got there safely is enough reason to say thank you, Lord. If you work from home, pray at your computer. At every meal, give God thanks. When you get home, turn the car off, give God thanks. At nights before you retire, pray. If you pray at any of these occasions, you should be praying at least five times throughout the day. Church, I cannot emphasize enough how important prayer is. I cannot emphasize enough what you would experience if you enter into God's presence in worship through prayer. Your lives will be changed and will be changed radically. There is no other experience that you will have than experiencing the present presence of the Almighty God. Nothing else will be comparable to that experience. So I say to you today, pray, worship God, pray, and see how your lives will be changed. Amen.